Okay. We are beginning with hyperbola and all the basic things required for hyperbola are exactly same as ellipse. Only difference is the focus directrix property. The ratio is <clears throat> supposed to be greater than 1. E is greater than 1. That is hyperbola. And therefore, what we are supposed to do is exactly same. You start with focus S. You start with <coughs> SP of E is greater than 1. So point P, SP distance of from the fixed point bears constant ratio eccentricity to its distance from a fixed line so sp upon sm sp upon pm is equal to e and sp is supposed to be greater than p so suppose we take some s here and we take directrix to this left side d okay so sp is supposed to be greater so this is the first point a then you have any other point whose sp is more than pm so this is sp is equal to pm you go a little up and therefore maybe this is the point P, but it is perpendicular, so I don't want to take perpendicular SP upon P. This is any general point PX dash comma Y dash on the required curve. Okay, and then SA upon AZ. S A upon A Z is equal to E. That is one point which you will have and other point that you will have S A upon A Z is E and another point somewhere here you will have which is eventually a dash we will replace A and A dash after we get the final. So, nahi, S A dash upon uh, nahi, nahi, sorry. There will be one more point here. S A dash upon A dash Z. Haan, S A dash upon A dash Z is greater than 1. Therefore, there will be one more point A dash. We call A as A comma 0 and a dash as opposite of a comma zero find coordinates of s and z so let me write down three four different questions which you are supposed to find the answers one find s and z two find equation of directrix Three, find equation of hyperbola in standard form. These are the three things that you should do. Using section formula, again you will get S as a e comma zero then z as a upon e comma zero correct and then if you use your locus method to find out x dash comma y dash sp upon pm is equal to e then you will get something like 
x dash square upon a square minus y dash square upon a square inside bracket a square minus one is equal to one and hence replacing x dash by y x and y dash by y we get desired equation of the curve which is hyperbola x square upon a square minus y square upon b square is equal to one where a square minus a square inside bracket e square minus one is equal to b square. Okay, so uh, I think you will get it, all of you. Coordinate of m is a upon e comma y dash. Okay, so once you have this expression with you, we have decided to analyze this algeb algebraic expression and find out some more things about it. So, what did we discuss in case of ellipse? In ellipse, it was bounded curve and beyond A and to the right and beyond minus a to the left it was not available so what is something similar okay before that symmetry one symmetry if we if x comma y satisfies the curve belongs to hyperbola then e is opposite of x comma y belong to hyperbola yes therefore symmetric about y axis Second, if x comma y belongs to hyperbola, then x comma opposite of y, does it belong to hyperbola? Yes, symmetric about x axis. Then, if x comma y belongs to hyperbola, then opposite of x comma opposite of y belongs to hyperbola, yes. Therefore, symmetric about origin. Again, we ended up getting a very symmetric figure about x axis and y axis. And hence, there must be one more focus and one more directrix. So, we end up getting in the diagram, we end up getting one more focus. Now, we have to divide a, a dash find out the perpendicular bisector of that. We call that as y axis. Line joining a a dash is your x axis. Now this is not a dash. Mm -hmm. Therefore, this is center of hyperbola C and therefore symmetrically you will have one more directrix and one more focus. directrix will be here one more directrix symmetry one more focus over here s dash whose coordinates will be minus a e comma zero this is d dash equation oh equation of directrix also you would have found out equation of directrix here was x minus a by e is equal to 0. Here x plus a by e let this point be z dash and therefore your curve is going to pass through p and pass through a and it will be symmetric with respect to x axis it will be symmetric with respect to y axis and therefore it will also be looking like this. This is your hyperbola, symmetric everywhere. This is origin. Right now, if we put in this equation, 
x square upon a square plus y square upon b square is equal to 1. This is the equation that we have. If we put two large values of x, yes, of course, we will have two large values of y, which will make sure that some difference is going to be 1. So x can tend to infinity. If x tends to infinity, y will tend to either plus or minus infinity. Yes or no? x square upon a square is equal to 1 plus y square upon b square. So if x tends to infinity, the y will tend to infinity plus or minus 4. Plus infinity, y will tend to plus or minus infinity. And if x tends to minus infinity, same. y will tend to plus or minus infinity. So extend, this is extend of your curve, it goes up to infinity, I mean, it doesn't stop. Okay, now if we put value of between A to opposite of A, what happens? If, I, if X is smaller than A, then will I be able to get 1 eventually? Suppose Y is equal to 0 on X axis, if I put value of X is equal to so zero, so I don't get a point. So origin is not on the curve, or nor between values of x between minus a to a not acceptable because you will not be able to produce one out of it. Not only on x-axis, but anywhere. That is what is important. Now, uh, what do I mean by this d? We said b square is equal to a square inside bracket e square minus 1. And e is greater than 1. However, b is going to be smaller or bigger depending upon how big e is. If E is between 1 and 2, then B will be smaller than A. But if E is greater than 2, then B will be greater than A. Okay, so everything is acceptable here. Provided E is greater than 1. And therefore, if you substitute X is equal to 0 in this expression, then what is the value of B that you are getting? If you put x is equal to 0, that is y axis, then y square upon b square is equal to 1. Therefore, opposite of y square is equal to b square, which is y square is equal to opposite of b square. Ah, this is dangerous. And we, we will have to really slog to figure out what do we mean by this. What is our B, whether it is physically present in front of us or not, because what we are trying to do is when we are substituting X is equal to zero, we are solving Y axis simultaneously with the curve. And once we try to solve Y axis simultaneously with the curve, the algebra says you don't have real points, which is okay which we can see in our diagram. Algebra says you don't have points. You have imaginary points of intersection. Y-axis in real will not intersect hyperbola. That is what algebra tells us. And we have to respect and then deal with this B very, very carefully. But now I am left with four minutes, three minutes. Therefore, I don't want to discuss that today, but elementary calculations we have done. Then tomorrow we are going to start with finding out lattice rectum, semi lattice rectum, then what is focal length, focal chord, all the things which we have done for ellipse, we will do it for hyperbola. And then we will find out what is the similarity and what is the difference. 
between ellipse and hyperbola and how they will go hand in hand and eventually how we will be able to characterize the degree two equation by looking at it in general form x square minus ab is going to be deciding factor we will learn that and this hyperbola is going to help us in doing that okay so that is where we stop for the day